Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for your patience while we were delayed a little bit. Uh, I have a few things to talk about up top, and then we'll get right to your questions. Uh, so first of all, to add to information already provided earlier by the White House, at the direction of the President of the United States, fighter aircraft assigned to U.S. Northern Command successfully took down a high-altitude airborne object off the northern coast of Alaska at 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today within U.S. sovereign airspace over U.S. territorial water. On February 9, North American Aerospace Defense Command detected an object on ground radar and further investigated and identified the object using fighter aircraft. The object was flying at an altitude of 40,000 feet and posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flight. U.S. Northern Command is beginning recovery operations now. U.S. Northern Command's Alaska Command coordinated the operation with assistance from the Alaska Air National Guard, Federal Aviation Administration, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We have no further details about the object at this time, including any description of its capabilities, purpose, or origin. The object was about the size of a small car, so not similar in size or shape to the high-altitude surveillance balloon that was taken down off the coast of South Carolina on February 4. Separately, U.S. Northern Command continues their recovery operations in support of the recent takedown of the Chinese high-altitude surveillance balloon. Recovery teams have mapped the debris field and are in the process of searching for and identifying debris on the ocean floor. Debris that's been recovered so far is being loaded onto vessels, taken ashore, cataloged, and then moved onwards to labs for subsequent analysis. And while I won't go into specifics due to classification reasons, I can say that we have located a significant amount of debris so far that will prove helpful to our further understanding of this balloon and its surveillance capabilities. Of note, uh, due to less than favorable sea states right now, teams will continue to conduct underwater survey and recovery as conditions permit. The department wants to thank our interagency partners from the U.S. Coast Guard, the FBI, and state and local authorities for their continuing assistance and partnership. Uh, in other news, and, and I think this is important, uh, that we remember uh, a lot of folks and uh, people in Turkey and Syria right now are, are suffering uh, we want to, again, express our support for the people of Turkey and Syria as they respond to the deadly earthquakes that struck there earlier this week. In support of ongoing U.S. assistance efforts spearheaded by the U.S. Agency for International Development, U.S. European Command has positioned personnel, equipment, and a range of assets to aid the government of Turkey in its continued search and rescue efforts. This includes the U.S. Navy's George H.W. Bush Carrier Strike Group, repositioning to the Eastern Mediterranean Sea to provide logistics, medical, and rotary airlift support if required. Additionally, U.S. Army Rotary Wing aircraft began flying missions out of Interlake Air Base in Turkey on February 7 to transport, transport first responders to the most affected populations. And on February 8, UH-60 Blackhawks transported injured civilians to a local medical facility. U.S. European Command has designated U.S. Naval Forces Europe and Africa as the lead component command overseeing the UCOM humanitarian assistance and disaster relief efforts within Turkey. To aid in that coordination, U.S. Marine Corps Brigadier General Andrew Pretty, U.S. Naval Amphibious Forces Europe Commander and 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade Commanding General arrived in Turkey February 9 to lead military coordination, coordination efforts with U.S. agencies involved in the humanitarian aid and disaster relief efforts. We'll continue to provide you with updates as we receive them. UCOM will be issuing a press release with further details. But again, we offer our thoughts and prayers to the people of Turkey and Syria during this tragic and difficult time. And finally, Secretary Austin welcomed Canadian Minister of National Defense Anon for a bilateral meeting here in the Pentagon today. The Secretary expressed his thanks and appreciation to Minister Anon for the cooperation rendered by Canada in tracking the PRC high-altitude surveillance balloon that violated the sovereignty of both of our countries. During the meeting, both leaders reaffirmed the close defense relationship between the United States and Canada, and a readout will be available later today on defense.gov. And with that, I will take your questions. We'll start with Associated Press, Tara Kopp. Hi, thank you for doing this. Um, a couple of questions on this latest shoot down. Uh, first, what type of U.S. fighter aircraft were used, and what type of munition did they fire? 
And do you already have Navy assets or Coast Guard assets out in, involved in a recovery process? And then I have a few more. Uh, thanks, Tara. So, so the uh, the aircraft that took down the object was an F-22, uh, flying out of uh, Joint Base Elmendorf in Alaska. Uh, it employed an AIM-9X uh, to to take down the the object. Uh, in terms of uh, assets that are currently involved, uh, uh, in terms of uh, Recovery, uh, we have HC-130, HH-60, and CH-47 aircraft participating in that recovery effort. Okay. Uh, you mentioned there was a reasonable threat. Um, was there also a threat to potentially this object detecting some of our more sensitive radar capabilities um, that are based in Alaska? And then what hasn't been said is where this object has come from. Is there any indication that this was also a Chinese surveillance balloon object, whatever it is. Yeah, so at this point, uh, we don't know the origin of the object. Um, again, we will know more uh, once we're able to potentially recover some of those materials. Uh, but the primary concern, again, was the uh, potential hazard to uh, civil flight. Uh, and so, again, we'll know more later. Thank you. No perceived threat to any of the radar installations that we have based in Alaska? Again, right now, uh, we'll, we'll know more once we assess it. Um, we'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Liz. Thanks for taking my question. Um, what made this threatening enough to shoot down? What is different about this object than the last object that was over Alaska because it was chosen not to shoot the last one down over Alaska? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the important thing to understand here is any time we detect anything, we're going to, uh, first of all, observe it and then make a decision and take appropriate action. So you have to look at each individual case on its own merits. In this particular case, uh, given the fact that it was operating at an altitude that posed a reasonable threat to civilian uh, air traffic, the determination was made and the president gave the order to take it down. Was there a specific threat, a, a specific civilian air traffic incident that could have happened? Again, out, uh, as you well know, civilian aircraft operate, you know, at a, at a variety of ranges up to 40 to 45,000 feet. So, again, there was a reasonable concern that this could present, uh, present uh, a threat to or a potential hazard to civilian air traffic. So let me... Question. Yep. Has Secretary Austin reached out to his Chinese counterpart or any other counterparts at all uh, since this has been tracked? Since this particular object? No. Let me go here, and then I'll come over to Lauren. Things from the previous balloon had been recovered. Uh, what additional information you have now about the capabilities of that balloon? Yeah, so we're continuing to assess that. Um, again, I'm not able to go into more detail other than uh, in addition to learning a lot about the balloon and the capabilities that it has while it was over the co continental United States, um, we have identified uh, or located a significant amount of debris on the ocean floor that will be very beneficial to us learning more about it. But at this point in time, I'm not going to have more details. The manufacturing label on these equipments or the balloons uh, indicate that they're all manufactured in China, sourced from China? A again, I'm not going to have details to provide it at this point in time. You also say that 39, yeah, 39 other countries have, have indicated they have seen balloons in their, in their territories. Are you sharing those information from uh, from mm -hmm. the Pentagon to these mm -hmm. countries or the capabilities, how you shot, shot them down? Uh, so in terms of what we're learning about these balloons, I know the State Department has talked to this in terms of our international outreach. Uh, certainly the Department of Defense plays a role in those relationships, and so we will continue to work with our allies and partners to share information along with our State Department colleagues. Let me go to Orrin. Uh, Two questions. First, did this object show any signs of maneuver maneuverability or propulsion? And then you, you and other Pentagon officials made a big deal about how much intelligence was gathered by letting the other one float across much of the United States, and yet you shot this one down before it entered the United States. Is that the Pentagon bowing to political pressure? Was there nothing to gain from this one? Yeah, so, so again, uh, we're going to judge each of these on its merits. N no indication at this time uh, that it was maneuverable, uh, but again, we'll, we'll know more. Um, and in terms of entering the United States, it did enter U.S. airspace, and we took it down. Did you gain intelligence from this one as you did from the previous one? We're going to recover uh, what we can from this and more to follow. And was the decision to shoot it down before it 
entered too far into the U.S. airspace, the Pentagon bowing to political pressure from the Hill? Uh, look, again, we're going to judge each of these objects on its own merits. It entered into U.S. airspace on February 9th. Uh, we, we sent up aircraft to assess what it was. The decision was made that it posed a, a reasonable threat to civilian air traffic. The president uh, gave the order to take it down, and we took it down. Thank you, Laura. And then I'll go to Dan. Um, to you. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for taking my question. Um, so a couple of questions. First of all, has anything like this happened before with uh, an object this size, this shape, in this this particular um, height for the 40,000-foot range? Has that has it happened before? And then second of all, um, how, why did you – can you say more about why you knew the, that last balloon or object was from China, whereas this one you don't know? Um, so – in terms of this particular object, again, as I highlighted, we don't know where it's from. It posed a reasonable threat to civilian air traffic, and so the determination was made to take it down. In terms of the other balloon, uh, as I mentioned in our previous uh, briefing, um, we have learned a lot about the Chinese surveillance high-altitude balloon program. Um, we've, we've gathered a lot of information over the last couple of years, and so we were able to, based on that information, detect at a, at a very early stage uh, as it approached U.S. airspace, we had a good understanding of what it was. As I mentioned, we were able to monitor that closely, track it while it went over the continental United States, uh, learn a lot about it, and take it down at the appropriate time. So would you would you urge us to put this in a different bucket than that, or should we Yeah, I think I was these? pretty clear. This was traveling at about 40,000 feet, which posed a potential, a reasonable threat to civilian air traffic. And the decision was made to take it down. So, Dan. When the pilot, uh, when the pilots approached it, um, and, and they determined, I understand that it was not manned. How did they determine that? And at that point, wouldn't it be possible to at least describe what they were looking at? Did it resemble a balloon or an airplane or what? Uh, again, we'll know more and have more information once we've recovered this. Um, I. I We'll give credit to our pilots uh, that they are um, very capable in terms of looking at an object, assessing whether or not this had the potential to be manned at that altitude, something that small, um, very, very unlikely that it was manned. Uh, and so, again, uh, no indication that it was manned, presented, presented a potential reasonable threat to civilian air traffic, and we took it down. What speed was it traveling at, by the way? I, I don't have that information. On the Chinese balloon, if we could go back. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it still, in the Pentagon's view, plausible or maybe even likely that it was uh, not necessarily intentional that when that balloon turned and blew eastward, that, that it seemed to have not, uh, you know, lost some, had some technical problems? Yeah. So, Dan, what I would tell you is based on the information that we have, uh, it, it was uh, being maneuvered and purposefully uh, driven uh, along its track. Again, recognizing that winds do play a role uh, because of the maneuverability of the balloon, um, it's our assessment that this was a, a purposeful mission. Uh, in terms of the uh, Chinese motivations, uh, again, I'd have to refer you back to China to talk about that. Ma'am, and then come to Nancy. We uh, emailed you police body camera footage showing a National Guard general in Ohio pushing my colleague and having to be escorted away from him this week. We asked the Ohio National Guard for comment, but do you, as a spokesperson for the Department of Defense, condone such conduct by a commissioned officer of the U.S. military against an American journalist? Yeah, so let me be clear. Uh, the answer is no. That, that's not acceptable behavior. Uh, the Secretary of Defense, the the Department of Defense uh, absolutely supports, uh, strongly supports, a free and independent press. Uh, so, again, I'd refer you to the Ohio National Guard for any comments uh, about that particular incident, but I can assure you that uh, that is not acceptable behavior. Can you face any kind of conduct on becoming charged under the UCMJ? Yeah, I'd have to refer you to them. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to make those kind of policy comments here from the podium uh, in terms of what they may or may not be doing to address it. It, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on that. Uh, let me go to Nancy. 
Um, I just had a couple clarifying questions. You said that um, that the pilots were able to see it, that it wasn't the same shape or size as the balloon. Can you say definitively it was not a balloon? Um, I don't – at this point, con considering the fact that um, we're still assessing the object, um, I, I don't want to get into characterizing it. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. You mentioned you didn't know how fast it was traveling. Can you say if it was traveling faster or slower than the balloon? I don't have that information in front of me, so I don't want to make it up. Let's try a couple more. Um, did anyone try to, within the administration, contact their Chinese counterparts before the decision was made to shoot it down? Uh, in, in terms of uh, when you say the administration, if you're referring to the White House, I'd have to refer you to them. Uh, the Department of Defense, uh, to my knowledge, did not. Again, we don't know uh, the point of origin of this object. Um, so, yeah. And was there any effort to jam or somehow disable this object before, so, such that it would pose less of a threat? I, I don't want to get into specific tactics or techniques that we may or may not use uh, when observing these types of things. A again, uh, NORAD sent up aircraft to observe, to see what it was, and then the ultimate decision was made based on the reasonable threat to civili civilian air traffic to take it down. So thank you. Tony? A couple things. You mentioned you've recovered, uh, recovered a significant or located a significant amount of debris. Is it fair to say you've, so you've located a significant amount of the payload? Uh, you're, you're talking about the PRC high-altitude yeah, balloon. This one today. Um, so, Tony, at, at this point, um, I'm not able to go into more detail other than we've, what I would describe, we've discovered or located a significant amount of the, uh, the uh, debris associated with the balloon. Again, we'll have more details to follow, but I'll just leave it at that. Located, but you haven't recovered and took uh, pulled out of the ocean for forensic analysis. Is that right? Yeah, so g great point. So th the, way that, uh, the way to understand how this is, is unfolding is uh, as we map out, the area where the debris field would be. Uh, it enables us to, to figure out where are the places that we need to prioritize the search, recognizing that we're, we're talking a wide area. And so as that happens, uh, divers are able to go down. And de depending on the size of the debris, uh, they're able to tag it. Uh, so debris that can be brought up quickly is brought up, put on a vessel, taken ashore. Debris that's going to take more time, uh, and again, especially given the current sea states, it may take a little uh, longer. Uh, we know where it is, so we tag it, and then we'll go back and eventually recover all of that and bring it up. So the equivalent is you found the Titanic, but you, don't, you haven't started pulling up uh, exactly. debris yet from it. Exactly. When I ask you about the overall program, you said you've been, you've been learning a lot about this balloon program over the last couple of years, yet the uh, annual China report doesn't have a peep about balloons in there. You spend a lot of money and effort, but no balloons. We learned yeah. about Taiwan and China's balance of power against them. And, Satellites and jets, but no balloons. Why not? So, so Tony, what I would say on the on the unclassified China Power Report, right? It, there's going to be certain elements, uh, intelligence aspects uh, in the unclassified version that may not be included in that particular report. Um, in terms of what's in that report and what's not in that report, um, again, we can go back and look at that. But I can tell you, I can assure you that there are a lot of activities that we continue to monitor. Uh, to include this balloon program, and we've learned a lot over the last couple of years. I'd have to go back and look. I do not know the answer to that. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, let me get a couple other folks here. Mike, and then. Thank you, Pat. Uh, the only reason the American people know about the first balloon is because a couple of guys in Montana spotted it and it, and it leaked out. My, my question is, if it had remained secret, and did not become a spectacle and, be, and arguably an embarrassment to the White House, would you have shot it down or allowed it to continue on its way? So you're asking me to speculate? <laughs> so, so, Mike, I, I'll kind of just push back a little bit at, at the assertion there. Uh, so, first of all, again, what made this balloon different was the length and duration uh, that it was over the, United, the continental United States. Look, we track activities all over the globe on a daily basis, um, some of which will remain classified because, again, we don't want to reveal sources and methods. In this particular case, um, I can tell you uh, that there were efforts underway to, uh, to make that public. Um, I, you know, Montana journalists reporting notwithstanding. Um, 
all that to say, look, there are going to be times when there's activities happening that we're monitoring that we're, we're not going to go public, especially if it doesn't present a particular or pose a significant threat to the American public. Um, but again, uh, as, as we monitored that balloon, uh, there was an effort underway to ensure that, that folks understood what this was, especially given how visible it was. Um, and I'll just stop there. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, General. First, um, a really quick follow-up on Tony's question. At this point, is the Pentagon reassessing the need for counter balloon or counter object capabilities at that altitude at this time? Uh, so, so what I would tell you is not, to, you know, in the Air Force sometimes we talk about don't get platform specific, right? So what we're talking about is um, monitoring the domain and having domain awareness. And again, as I highlighted, uh, er, like seems like a couple days ago, probably last week, um, we're continuing to learn more and more, more about this program, which enables us to identify and track objects, uh, and so uh, and and thus ensure that we're continuing to protect uh, our our skies and our airspace. Thank you. So and thank then, you. Um, real quick, first, do you and Admiral Kirby know the shape of this new object? And if so, what is um, sort of the reason for why you can't share its shape before it was shot down? And then separately, how is the recovery efforts of this new object downed over ice different from the one downed over the coast and water? And are you guys using unmanned systems for this new object as well? Yeah, thank you. So in, in terms of the shape, I don't know. I have not seen any imagery of it. I'm, I'm just telling you the uh, verbal characteristics as it was this, described to me. Uh, in terms of the difference in the recovery effort, I mean, ag again, so this literally was what, an hour and a half, two hours ago? So that's underway right now. Uh, so more to follow on that front. Um, right now, I think they're moving to the site. We'll have more to follow in the days ahead. Let me go to a few other folks here, sorry. Some new folks back here, and then we'll go over here to Mike. You mentioned that uh, the object was spotted yesterday. Is that the first that, you, that we saw it? Or did we see it coming in a couple days before? No, it was spotted yesterday. And uh, for uh, follow up, uh, did what we have, what we learned about the first balloon last week, uh, did that help us detect this object? Um, I, I would say that again, um, we detect when we detect objects. Um, well, let me just back up. So, what you're asking is, did what we learned from the PRC balloon help us track this? Um, kind of a little bit of apples and oranges, right? Um, in terms of. Um, NORAD NORTHCOM maintains the ability to, to track objects. So again, they track this as it approached and entered into U.S. airspace. Um, again, we're still assessing what this object was. So um, I, I don't know that we learned anything new as a result of that other than, again, I think we're all, to include the media and the public, very attuned to balloons at the moment. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, just to clarify, so this was first identified when it flew into U.S. airspace, is that correct? Or was it identified before it? It was detected yesterday. And then, again, uh, NORAD sent up aircraft to observe it, see what it was, and then the decision was made to take it down. And do you have any information whether this uh, object flew over any other sovereign nations or countries? I do not. I do not. Okay. We have time for a few more. Let me go to Joe. question about the um, recovery effort. Um, I think you had mentioned at the outset that it, that it was going to involve rotary wing aircraft. That's because it landed on ice as opposed to water. That's why um, there isn't um, watercraft being used. Is it? Yeah, Joe, we'll, we'll get you more information on that front. Um, you know, again, this happened just a short while ago. Uh, and so uh, according to, to NORTHCOM, th these are the assets that were being used uh, to go out and, and do the initial recovery, but we'll, we'll have more information in terms of the, the various roles and responsibilities of those. To get down in the weeds for a second, any, any idea of what, um, what units are involved in the recovery effort or in the, um, the F-22 that, that shot it down? We, we can get you that information. Thanks. Bill? Hey there. Just a couple of clarification questions. First off, when you first identified it, was it traveling at the same altitude, around 40,000 feet? Um, did you at that point know its velocity? 
And and secondly, you know, does doesn't Northcom have the authority on its own to shoot down unidentified objects entering U.S. airspace if they fo- pose a threat to civilian air traffic? Uh, and if so, then why was the president's authorization uh, required uh, in this case? Yeah, thanks. Um, so my understanding is it was at 40,000 feet uh, when it was detected and, and ultimately taken down. Uh, the NORAD uh, NORTHCOM commander um, does not have the authority necessarily to take down an object if it's not posing uh, a potential hostile uh, intent or actions. Uh, however, given the fact that this aircraft was, uh, op- or excuse me, this object was operating at an altitude that posed a reasonable threat to uh, civilian air traffic. Uh, after consultation uh, the, with the secretary and the president, and of course the president, uh, on our advice, uh, gave the order to take it down, and we took it down. I'm trying to clarify, is, is his authorization required in a situation like this? Um, again, it's kind of a moot point at this point because the president gave the order, but he has the authorization to take action against anything that presents a potential threat to the American public or people on the ground. In this particular case, it was determined that this posed a reasonable threat to air traffic. Again, I, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Thanks. Tara? Just a couple of clarifiers. Um, was it a single F-22 or a pair um, that were up today for the shot? And then when the when NORAD sent the initial uh, aircraft up to sea, was there any sort of hailing or any type of warning given? Typically, when an aircraft makes an incursion into protected airspace, there's a whole lot of procedures that have to be followed before it would escalate to something like this. Okay, well, this was an object, right? So it wasn't an aircraft, per se. Um, it, and to answer your earlier question, uh, it was a two-ship of F-22s, um, but one aircraft took the shot. Got time for one more. Go to Liz. Uh, really quick, when it was started to be tracked last night, were you able to tell what direction it was coming from? Uh, this this was traveling in a in a northeasterly direction uh, when it was taken down. And then one more, um, the aircrafts that were observing it. What what type of aircrafts were those? I'll have to come back to you. I think I know, but I don't want to make it up from the podium. So we'll come back to you on that one. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it.